Hey everybody, um, this is Lynn. It's been a little while since I've done a video, and um, I just thought I'd update a little. Um, my weight loss has been fairly slow, but in well, since Christmas, I guess I've lost about 15 pounds. Um, <laughs> I always wanted to be faster and faster, but um, I've only got like 12 pounds to lose till I hit my doctor's goal, and I'm I guess I'm eight months old out. Um, I want to lose about 20, 25 more, but I'm doing really good and feeling really good, and um, it's been pretty uneventful for me. You know, I had it June 17th and. God, how many months is that? But anyway, I'm feeling really good. Um, I'm really busy because I, I work a full-time job, and then pretty much every weekend I leave North Carolina, and I live near Charlotte, and drive down to Georgia so I can be with my husband. Um, most weekends I'm going down there because he's on call a lot and we're sort of living between the two states and I have to say you know I really love Georgia I was really surprised I didn't think it was going to be that great of course I haven't been down there for the summer yet so I don't know but um we're living around the Cleveland area where he is <laughs> I'm, I'm there on the weekends and uh it's really beautiful it's really nice it feels like home home is is Hendersonville, North Carolina, you know, and it's a little kind of mountainous and nice weather and really beautiful community and Cleveland kind of is small, much smaller than Hendersonville, but it just has that same kind of vibe, same kind of feel, very homey feeling and, and I really love it and I think I'll really learn to like living there in the future. Um, it's been an interesting weekend. I was down there this weekend and I found out about, you know, what had happened with Amelia. I saw Allison's video. Oh my God, it just like broke my heart. It just like got on the phone, called my kids, you know. It's like she don't really know us. Because mostly I'm a voyeur. I mean, I made a few videos, but I'm mostly a voyeur. But, you know, you start feeling like you know these people you watch because you watch them so much. and she's one of the first ones that I had started watching a little over a year ago when I was contemplating gastric bypass so I really followed her and um you know when things happen it's like holy crap especially since like a month ago I was having an issue with pain in my stomach above my belly button couldn't figure out what that was and finally figured out it wasn't really much of nothing and I've learned how to take care of myself better keep things moving if you know what I mean <laughs> but it's scary because you know when you've had a really uneventful surgery and afterwards pretty uneventful well for me in the beginning it was rough I mean I was very weak and it took me months and months to get strength back I mean I hear about these people who go shopping right away and stuff I was ass dragging for months but I'm really doing pretty good now, but it worries me when something like this happens because I worked at a hospital for 14 years, and no, I wasn't medical staff, but I had two members of my family, one being my ex-husband and the other being my mother, who were very ill many times over those years. My mother had terminal cancer, which um, took her life in 95, and my husband had numerous back surgeries and other health conditions, and uh, he's still kicking, he ain't never going to die, but <laughs> my mom got where we were doing weekly blood transfusions, and she built up a lot of antibodies and was having issues. And we were having it done in Greenville, South Carolina, and then we decided we'd get it done in Hendersonville so I wouldn't have to take her so far because it was so physically stressful for me to take her 30-some-odd miles, you know, to have this done. 
And uh, we had had it done up in Hendersonville a few times. And this one particular time we get there and I look at the blood that they've got hanging in there. And I tell the nurse, she cannot have that. So my mother was AB negative. But she had built up antibodies, and you had to give her what she is. You no longer could substitute some O for it. You couldn't do that anymore. And she started having a little anxiety over it, and so did I. And I'm trying to explain to the nurse, and she's like, are you a doctor? I said, I don't need to be a doctor. I've taken care of her for eight years. I'm the one running constantly with her. <laughs> I know what her doctor in Greenville had said to do. I know what was ordered. I know how things are supposed to work. And I was just getting crazy. Well, my mother's told me, calm down, relax. They know what they're doing, and just calm down. So they went ahead and gave it to her. And I was just devastated. And within an hour, she started having reactions. My mother almost died from that little incident. They had totally retransfusion. Her her body was totally rejecting the blood. She spent I don't know how long in the hospital after that. I was so pissed and from that day forward I have decided that when I'm in the hospital or a family member's in the hospital or seeking medical care, they are never gonna go in there alone. Never. They're not going to spend any time alone in a hospital room with a doctor anywhere. And I'm going to fight for that. I mean, when my child had to go in and get an ultrasound for ovarian cyst, and she was 15 years old, and the first time it had happened, we had a female do it, and she was perfectly fine with me being there. The second time it was going to happen, they sent a man out to do it, and there was like no way in hell that my kid was going to be in there with this guy, who I found to be kind of creepy looking, without anyone else present. And he's telling me I can't go. Well, guess what? I got on the phone to my doctor, and I said, I don't go. She don't go. We go elsewhere, which is exactly what we do. And, okay, so I'm a control freak. But let me tell you something. When it comes to your family... You have to be. And when you present yourself at ER and you know there's something really wrong with you, they will treat you like you're there for drugs. Okay? And I, for one, am not a dopey. Don't care about drugs. Avoid ER with everything in me. I can't stand the thought of going to it just because I know who they are and because I worked at the hospital. I know what they're thinking. You know, but sometimes people die in ER waiting for help. And we all know that because we've seen it on TV. We all know it. And I'm not saying that's happened where I used to work. To my knowledge, it has not happened. But I know medical mistakes get made. And I know that they don't always take us serious. And, you know, you got to make some noise to save yourself. And I'm so glad that Amelia has made it through this because Lord have mercy that was a frightening experience and I drove home on Sunday I came home early because the weather was going to go bad and we didn't know what was going on with weather and you know I have to drive through Greenville on 85 and I tell you I was having tears because it upset me so much about her and, and this is a girl that's been really healthy and has done a lot and has taught us all a lot. And I, I'm so thankful, Amelia, that you're doing pretty good right now. And I know it really sucks. But just think if she'd have went home. Just think if she'd have went home. After they're kind of talking to her like she's a dingbat. So people, take care of yourselves. Pay attention to your bodies. And take care of your family members because it's up to us to make sure we get what we need. And if we can't do it, God, I hope you got somebody in your corner fighting for you. So, God bless you, Amelia. God bless you. I wish you great health. Take care, everybody. Love you.